Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 71808, Kai's Elemental Fire Mech from the January 2024 wave of LEGO Ninjago Dragons Rising sets. This set contains 322 pieces, 4 minifigures, and will retail for $29.99 in the US. This was gifted to me early for review by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. I'm doing a bunch of early 2024 LEGO reviews right now, including the rest of the Ninjago sets, but also LEGO Sonic, LEGO Dreams, LEGO Monkey Kid, and more. So if you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm getting super close to 100 thousand subscribers, which would be an amazing milestone to reach. Also, make sure to let me know in the comments which 2024 Ninjago set you want to see an early review of next. Thank you all very much for your support, and now let's get into the review. So here's the main build of this set, of course, Kai's Elemental Fire Mech. There is also a side build in this set, which you probably saw in the intro, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, but the mech itself is one of three medium-sized mechs released this wave. There's also Cole's Elemental Earth Mech, which I already have a review up of on the channel, and Sora's Elemental Tech Mech, which I'll be reviewing later today, and then there's one more coming out in March, a Lloyd Mech. Now, of course, these mechs are all in the same style, but they also have a play feature that ties together too. You see, you're meant to be able to like actually swap the parts around on these mechs and customize them to combine different parts from different ninjas and make the mech your own thing. So the arms of the mechs are on ball joints are meant to be very easily removed. You just pop them off like this. And then there's also a waist joint which allows you to rotate the mech's torso, but also makes it very easy to separate the torso from the rest of the mech. And all three of the mechs I just showed you, plus the Lloyd mech and March, could do this. So if you wanted, you could take like the torso from the Kai mech and add the arms of the Sora mech and the legs from the Cole mech. Basically, any combination you could think of, you could do. Now I think it's really cool that you could do all of that, however, I won't be showing all the different combinations in this video. In fact, I'll be doing a separate video showcasing all of that. In this video, I just want to focus on the Kai mech, but I wanted to mention that this play feature is a thing. So now, with the Kai mech all put back together, I'm gonna be honest and say this is my favorite of these three mechs. Now, if you watched my Cole mech review, I said in that one that I thought that one was my favorite, and to be fair, from official pictures, it was. However, when when I filmed that review, that was the only one I had built up, but now I've built up all three, and I can confidently say this one is my favorite. Now, I had the chance to visit LEGO's headquarters earlier this year and see these early in Denmark, and when I was there, this one honestly didn't stand out a ton to me. Like, it looked good, don't get me wrong, just like all the mechs look good, but I thought the Sora mech and the Cole mech looked really unique, and this just kind of felt like another Kai mech. But now that I've had the chance to build this up myself and have more time with it, it's genuinely super impressive, and there's more to this build than meets the eye. So, let's go through every bit of this build. The feet on this mech, funnily enough, are probably my least favorite part. They just have a bit of an odd shape to them, and I'm not a huge fan of the amount of black used here just because it's not really used anywhere else in the build. Like, black and red can be a really cool color scheme, but the rest of the build's more red and bright orange, so I think I'd like these better if they matched a little bit more. Definitely a very unique shape to them, it's got like two toes on each side. That does give the mech like somewhat of a unique personality. That being said, I think I would have preferred for it to match everything else. However, in terms of actual stability and posability, these are fairly solid. There's a ton of friction, so it does help like keep the legs in place. And forward and back motion on these feet isn't huge, like it's fine, but it's not as big as some other mechs. However, side to side's pretty big, which that's motion that's like, it's nice, it's there. Personally, I don't need it, because like that's not how feet in real life work, but this isn't meant to be a person. This is a mech, and I suppose it allows you to get some fun poses out of this thing. Moving up to the legs though, these use a ton of different SCCBS parts. There's this armor piece on the front, and that's an all new part for this wave. It comes in a few sets, but I believe this is the only set it comes in in red, which is an amazing color to get, and I think as like a knee piece for the mech, it works absolutely perfectly. On top of that though, they also use the SCCBS joint pieces to make the shape of the leg, and they've got two of them stacked on top of each other here to make the leg a little bit wider. Once again, I think that's a really good use of that part, and that's a really great recolor for it too, as this is the first ever set it comes in in bright orange. I could see this being reused for like an Aaron mech in the future, but of course it also definitely fits Kai. Around the back on this leg, there's actually a clip where you can hold a sword that's just Kai's accessory in this set, so when Kai's in the mech, you can have the sword held here. That's the kind of thing that, it's a small touch, is it necessary? No, but it's something I very much appreciate. It's always good to have places to store your accessories. And then finally, at the top right here, we have the classic SCCBS armor pieces, which red's not a new color for that part that's come in a few sets, but I really like what was done with these next night shields, where they sort of cascade beneath those new pieces. And those new parts are just connected on with clips on a bar, so you can fold the knee pads down if you want. Obviously, that does not look very good, but you're not really supposed to do that, it's just an option you have. Maybe if you want to imagine like how he's doing repairs on the mech or something, but yeah, it looks best to keep them folded up. These legs look great from every angle, the new armor pieces really do so much. They're just the perfect shape to go with that joint piece, and I think this is what's turned this mech into my favorite one. Because from pretty much every angle, it just looks perfect. It feels mechanical, yet armored, like it feels like it could actually fight, and also is very well themed around Kai. Bright orange is just such a fun color too, I really love it, especially with the red. And I like how subtle it is too, like there is a good amount of it used, but it's covered up by the red. They're really just mesh together perfectly. The legs connect onto the waist with ball joints, you can see you can swing them forward, swing them back. If you try to move them in, it is a little bit limited by the lip on the top of this armor piece right here, but I don't think that's a huge deal. And of course, you can't really bend them in further, but why would you be able to? I wouldn't expect it to do that. Cockpit of the mech is nice, it's nothing too crazy, but it's definitely good. The Sora mech and the Cole mech definitely go a little bit further with a cockpit, and this one doesn't, but I think that's perfectly fine. There's like a very smooth look to this entire mech, and this definitely keeps that theming. But yeah, you can see there's a new printed Dragon's Rising emblem in the center right here, and then you can fold this open, and there's the space inside to fit 
fit the Kai minifigure. He just plops down on these studs right here, good amount of room for him, he doesn't feel too cramped, and he can close this back up around him. And then coming to the arms, they're very similar to the legs. They once again use this new armor piece, though this time around to be shoulder pads, and I think that works really well because that helps keep the mech looking somewhat organic and bulky, because obviously the actual ball joint connection is quite small, so for like a very armored mech like this, sometimes that'll feel a little bit out of place. But because this armor piece is connected on clips, it's actually able to move, so when we move the arm around, the armor can move with it, to keep the mech feeling like one solid build. That idea is not new, we have seen other mechs do similar things, but I think this new part really lends itself to it. There's another really cool part right here, this is like the electricity piece that was introduced in the first Dragon's Rising wave, and in that wave we got it in trans yellow and trans light blue, I believe, to represent lightning and ice. But now we have it in trans orange in the set to represent fire. Which, like, if they were using that to represent straight fire, I wouldn't say it works the best, but this is a fire mech, so having a sort of fiery lightning coming off of it is actually quite cool, and I think fits in really well. That piece is used twice in each arm, the first one's at the shoulder pad and this can actually be rotated around if you want, and the second one connects on the mini ball joint so you can move that one around. And then finally at the hand they use the mech finger pieces which were introduced in 2023, and there's space to hold on to an accessory if you want. Which while in that hand there's nothing, in the other hand there's this giant sword, and yeah I mean this looks really cool, I believe this was the sword piece introduced in the second core wave of this year, and it fits in perfectly with like this classic golden blade piece, but this is just so ridiculous and oversized and it fits this mech and Kai perfectly, and it's a ton of fun just to pose this with the sword. Here's how the mech looks from the back, and honestly that's pretty good. There is anti-suds of course, but that's not a huge deal. The colors all look good though, and the bulk matches, and I think that's the most important thing to me. Posability on this one's a lot of fun. I will say in some ways it's a little more limited than some other mechs. For example, there's no actual hands in this mech, you can rotate the sword a little bit, which does help with posing. But because there's no hands, if you want to turn the sword, you have to mostly turn the entire arm, which can restrict things sometimes, but personally I don't think it's the biggest deal. I've still found this mech to be a lot of fun to play around with, and it looks great all the time too. I'll probably talk about this more in my video where I'm combining the three mechs, but I really love how each of the three mechs has like a different idea behind it. Cole's is very clearly like a bulky tank. It's short, it's wide, it's got this massive hammer. While Kai feels like more of a traditional knight. Not like traditional, traditional, I know it's a giant mech suit. But no, he has bulky armor, just not as bulky as Cole's. But the mech's also tall, and it's got this giant sword in its hand. While the Sora mech, which I know I haven't gotten to yet, but I'll get to soon, feels to me like more of a speedster role. And I think the three of them go together really well, while also each standing on their own. This mech does feel a little bit bigger than the other two, which yeah, this set is ten more dollars. No, it does also come with a side build, which is part of that. But I'm pretty sure even not counting the side build, this one is a little bit larger. I know Kai gets mechs all the time, Kai gets so many mechs, but I'm gonna be honest, when a mech's good, a mech's good, and this is a really, really great one. So yeah, I couldn't be happier with this, I love this new mech building system, and I hope we get more for some of the other ninja in the future. But I'll talk about the overall set more at the end of this video. For now, let's take a look at the side build in this set, then the minifigures, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. Here's the side build in this set, the wolf mech, and this thing is so wacky, but I absolutely adore it, I love this thing. So fun fact about this build, this is actually based off one of the designer's sketch models for LEGO Nexo Knights. That was never turned into an actual set, so we sort of repurposed the idea here and turned it into this. And of course, it makes a lot of sense for the wolf villains of this wave. But man, like, where do I even begin with this? I think this is a great villain build, because it's almost like a corruption on the stuff we've seen for the ninja. Because it does still use the SCCBS system, right? That's the cockpit piece, those are the limb pieces. And the mech in this set uses the same parts as well as mechs that we've gotten previously. But this mech, like, breaks a lot of the rules on what you see in the ninja mechs. Instead of little hands at the end of the joint, you have these giant arms that extend out with a claw on the end, and these very, like, canine-like legs, too. You could definitely imagine this mech either crawling on all fours or standing up like I just had it, and both seem to fit it really well. The feet use these tooth pieces in gray to be claws, which I don't know if that's a new color for that part. I've seen them in, like, gold and, like, white before. I think light gray might be new, though, and I like the use of this black piece back here to represent fur. The shaping on the legs is very werewolf-esque, and the tail at the back on a mini ball joint's a nice touch, too. This SCCBS cockpit piece is an all-new recolor. It's our first time getting this part in any shade of blue, which is very nice to see, great for, like, mock builders. Like, if you wanted to make a custom J-Mac, that's a really good part to have. And if I open it up, you can see I have a wolf mask warrior standing inside, and you just attach the backs of his legs right here. This build is creepy and cool in the best way possible. I think it fits these villains perfectly. I'm also just happy to have a villain build at all, because they're not the most common things as of recent. But yeah, this fits these guys really well, and honestly, I would love to, like, army build these things. There's just so much personality in the build, it's so unique, and I think it is fun for play, too. Now, there is one thing I have to point out about this build, because it is a review, and I want to show you the good and the bad. While it's really cool for display, for play, it could get a little bit annoying, because sometimes these armor pieces pop off if you move the arms in the wrong way. That's, of course, a very simple fix, but because the arms and everything are so thin, there's not much like actually locking those in place. If you're posing for display, you'll be perfectly fine, it's very easy to find a pose and reattach them, but I have had those fall off of me a couple of times just by moving it around in the wrong way, and I'm sure with kids playing with this, that'll also be an issue for them. So how important is that to you? That's up to you to decide, but I thought it was worth pointing out. Personally, though, I love this build, that's not an issue to me, just a great one all around.
around. Now coming to the minifigures, here are the first two in this set. We of course have the mech pilot suit version of Kai as well as the mech pilot suit version of Zane. The mech pilot suits are cool because they're basically all the same thing, just recolors of each other, but the way the belts are wrapped are a little bit different, and then each ninja also has their own symbol. Starting with Kai though, who's of course the main focus of this set, I actually really love the colors on this one. He uses bright orange for his belt, which of course the mech also uses, and I really wish he used that color more. I know it's also Aaron's color and Sora's color, so it makes sense that Kai doesn't use it a ton, but red and bright orange is just an amazing color combination and like really fits the element of fire. So I like that it's on his belt, I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more of it here. There's a little bit on this trim in his torso, but yeah, it definitely could have been more prevalently featured. Now all of these suits use gold and I think to mixed effect. On Kai, I'm kind of in between. I think red and gold is really good, but red and gold and bright orange might be a little bit much. I don't know, I go back and forth on this. I've been looking at this figure for the past few days and sometimes I look at it and I'm like, wow, that's the best figure of the wave. Other times I'm like, mm, it's okay, like it's fine, but not my favorite. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think in the comments, because to me, I don't know, sometimes the bright orange and the gold clash a little bit, because they are very similar colors, though not exactly the same, and maybe they're just stepping on each other's toes. The new mask piece on these two, though, is amazing. I really love this new part. If you want to see my full thoughts on that, go check out my Eagle the Master Dragon review. I go into more detail there about why I like that piece. And you can see the back of Kai's torso, that's his name and in jargon. Face print underneath the hood is the same one from Dragon's Rising with, like, the digital eyes on one side, and on the other side, he has, like, a very confident smirk. Now, you may notice that here, Zane has his armor piece and Kai does not, and yes, that's just how the figures come. I assume it's because Kai doesn't fit into the mech with an armor piece, so they just left it off so it wouldn't be an issue for kids. That's the kind of thing that, like, I get, but it's still disappointing to see. They want the minifigure just to be able to be plopped into a mech without issue, but it is still a little bit funny that Zane has his armor and Kai does not. So if you're curious what Kai looks like with the armor piece, I'll put it on him instead. There's how that looks, and I think this actually does do a lot for the suit. I think I like it significantly better with the armor piece. I feel like the gold ties in a lot better, and the bright orange doesn't feel like it's fighting with the gold, because the bright orange printing and the actual gold piece feels super different. So that's a significant improvement, so if you guys want to make that customization, you can, but you would need to have that part from your own collection or take it from Zane like I just did. Because officially, Zane's the only ninja in the set who's supposed to have that part. Zane, though, might be my favorite mech pilot, Sue. I don't know, I go back and forth. I think I'm between him and Cole and Lloyd, but Zane's definitely up there for me because the white and gold is just so beautiful when it's done right, and I have to say here, it is done right. They bounce off each other so well, and I really love the gold hands, they add so much. The armor piece definitely helps, too. But the light blue that's used also pops so much, I especially love it on the hood, that's such a great color for the hood piece. But yeah, between the hood and the torso and all the gold everywhere, this thing is beautiful. And I think the light gray belt is the perfect choice. It's only on the belt, so it's not like you're introducing too many colors here, and gray is a very neutral color. But yeah, this is very clearly to me the master of ice, like he represents ice so well, this is clearly Zane to me. And the mech suits are just cool, I love how robotic and armored they are. There he is with the armor and hood piece removed, you can see once again he has this digital eyes from Dragon's Rising. And on the alternate side he has like a somewhat stern expression, his name written on the back and in jargon, and that very armored design. Though once again, I love that little bit of blue peeking through here. Just compare that to Kai, right? Right? that light blue pops so much more than dark red does. Even though these two are the exact same design, just in different colors, I really, really love the way Zane was done. I'm a little bit biased because Zane is my favorite ninja, but come on, this does look really good. And then here are the other two minifigures in this set. We have Jordana and we have a Wolf Mask Warrior. Now, Jordana is a minifigure I'm very surprised to be getting, but one I am very happy to be getting. Because, of course, she was a character in Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 1, but she was sort of a side character villain that I thought was going to be a show-exclusive character, so I was very surprised to see she was getting an actual figure here. When I visited Denmark as a part of our LFM days, the designers actually told me she was designed for the show first, and based on the show, the designers put her in sets. Which, that's quite cool, because it's not often that happens, normally it's the other way around, where the sets are done first and the show writes around the sets. So it's neat to see a show character made physically so soon after her introduction. The hairpiece on Jordana is all new, however, it's not accurate to the show, at least as of what we've seen in the show, because the hairpiece that she has in the show is the same one as, like, Gail Gossip, and I'm pretty sure that piece just isn't produced anymore. So they swapped it out to the same one they swapped Gail to. Though, of course, in Dark Red, and again, I'm pretty sure that is an all-new color for her. I think that fits her well in this could end up being accurate to season two of the show. We haven't seen season two yet, but I feel like it definitely fits her personality. And then I like the expression on her face too. She's just somewhat annoyed, and she's got like that metallic gold Imperium circuitry on the side of her face too, just like Sora has. She does have an alternate face too, where she's got a more sinister smile, but again, that printing on her cheek's still there. Really great to get this character genuinely. Her torso and leg print are not exclusive. It's actually the same one that Cinder has in the Eagle set, and that's because these are both generals of Roz's army, I assume. So since she's higher tier than just this guy, she has a slightly different suit. And they definitely show off her status. She's got like this attachment around her neck, which I think is an all new recolor for this wave. That like fluffy coat piece in sand blue, which is amazing to get. And her outfit just feels a little more armored than the rest. You can see there's some metallic bits at the top, and there's almost like samurai armor hanging down. And then there's also new jargon on her torso that spells out Wolf Moon. Which we don't know the significance of that yet, obviously the villains are wolf-themed and moon-themed, but perhaps that's the name of the villain faction, I'm not sure yet. We will have to see when the show comes out. Here's a full look at her torso print and her face print with the neck piece removed. And there's the back torso print as well, where yeah, you can see once again, very like armored. Much more so than the other members of the army. And there's the alternate face once again. 
And then the Wolf Mask Warrior I won't spend too long on because I've already covered him in a few other reviews. But these guys are really good generic villain designs. They used the sword piece which was introduced a long time ago but it was used on like the Pyro Vipers in Ninjago Season 11. But I believe this is an honor recolor in silver. And this mask piece is really cool. It's still molded in like this lighter cyan blue as well as dark blue. And it makes those teeth really pop and the eyes really pop. And the mask is molded similarly to like the modern Batman masks where you can take it off and there's a full minifigure head underneath. The torso spells out wolf and in jargon. And around the back there's that same symbol that Jordana has of what I assume is an actual wolf moon or a wolf or a boris thing i don't know again that's the kind of thing we have to wait and see but yeah just generic villain but these are really really high quality generic villains happy to see they come in so many sets jordana is obviously the highlight though because i don't know if i said this yet but at least as of me recording this video this is the only set that jordana comes in so as of right now she is exclusive will she remain that way i cannot say one way or the other but if you want to get her in january 2024 this is the only way to do it and so overall what are my thoughts on this set well one thing i've not touched on yet is the price and normally this is the part of the video where i go yeah, the set's good, but the price, not so much. However, that is the exact opposite here, because the price is actually pretty incredible. The price for this is great, and maybe I've just become jaded because so many LEGO prices have been just, like, ridiculous recently, but this mech alone feels huge for 30 If the mech alone without the side build was, like, $40, I honestly don't think I would have been too surprised. Now, would I have called that a good price? No, absolutely not. But it's not 40 it's 30 and there's a side build, and there's four minifigures. The price on this is actually amazing, I'm thoroughly impressed by that. And and I'm very happy to see it. Keep this up, Lego, please. Please don't go back to, like, stupid overpriced stuff. This is exactly what I want. Make me feel like I actually spent my money on something good. So yeah, price surprisingly not bad this time around. Build actually really great, too. So 100% I would recommend this set. Honestly, I think the biggest thing holding this set back is the fact that it's a Kai mech. So if you've been collecting for a while, you probably have other Kai mechs, and you may not feel like you need this one. Which, if that's you, that's totally fair. If you don't care about the minifigures and don't really want the build, you don't have to get this set. But being honest, this is the one I was the least excited for, and it ended up being my favorite. Because of course Cole doesn't get sets too often Sora this is her second mech ever In fact her second set ever that's based around her But I ended up liking the Kai mech more than both of them Just because it's really really well done Side build is so much fun too It's great to have that for the villains And I believe it's the biggest villain build in this entire wave Which is a little bit sad to say But hey at least there's something So yeah obviously not for everybody But if this interests you 100% I recommend it Great value, great build Just so many good things all around but of course, if those are just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And let me know in the comments which 2024 Ninjago set you want to see an early review on next. But as for this one, I think that's about all I have to say. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!